Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about all the new plot details and links for Spider-Man No Way Home. All of my information from this video is coming from these sources and reports all over Twitter, Reddit. Before we get into the video, before I give you guys all my thoughts on these leaks and plot details, if you guys are new on here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you don't miss any time I open a new video or I go live. But without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. So, the first thing that we have reported is that Green Goblin is going to be the main villain. It's also being reported that Green Goblin's motivation is going to be him wanting to go after Tony Stark's arc reactor. Personally, I don't mind the choice of this person being, being the main villain, but the only thing that I don't really like about this is the motivation itself. I don't understand why everything has to revolve around Tony and the MCU. People are saying, oh, it revolves around Uncle Ben and the other movies. Not all of the stuff like Doc Ock, for example, Green Goblin. All of these characters don't necessarily relate around Uncle Ben, whereas in the MCU, everything that Spider-Man does has to do with, with Tony Stark. We had Vulture in Homecoming, Mysterio with the Edith glasses, and in this movie, it's going to be Green Goblin with Tony Stark's arc reactor. I just feel like they, they aren't letting Spider-Man fight normal crime and just it, they don't let him do anything that's separated from Tony and that's really what I don't like. Hopefully it's going to be something that just moves the plot along. It's not too important to the main part of the story. So the next thing I want to talk about is the reported Sinister Six. So in No Way Home, the Sinister Six is reportedly going to be including of Green Goblin from Raimi's movies, Electro from the Web movies, Doc Ock from Raimi's movies, Sandman from Raimi's movies, Rhino from Web's movies, and Lizard from Web's movies. Personally, I think the Sinister Six is a cool idea. I'm not necessarily opposed to it. It just depends what all of their motivations are. And we did get a bunch of plot details about all of the Sinister Six villains and how they get into the world and stuff like that, which I'll get into later in this video. But personally, I really don't have much thoughts on this. It could go both ways. If they have good motivations and it's not something stupid, or it's not a stupid way that they get to the MCU world, then I'll be fine with it. I semi like the idea that we got in the plot details, which again, I'll go over later in this video. But overall, I'm just kind of mad on it right now i kind of have average feelings i don't necessarily think the multiverse idea is the best idea i definitely like the original idea that marvel went with which was just having peter parker on the run and actually finding himself as a human and that we'd get to actually learn about his character whereas in homecoming and far from home we didn't really get to learn much about him as a person and so apparently with the new deal with marvel and sony sony wanted to make marvel implement the multiverse stuff into spider-man no way home and apparently loki was supposed to have more multiversal stuff but Sony made them move into Spider-Man Away Home so that it was possible for Spider-Man to cross over to the Sony universe. It's kind of important to know that Marvel actually had a decent plan for Spider-Man. And you guys know me, I'm personally not the biggest fan of Spider-Man in the MCU. You guys can check out my why I don't like the MCU Spider-Man video here. I also have a bunch of other Spider-Man videos that'll be in the link in the description down below. And I think that Marvel was really gonna redeem themselves with this Spider-Man Away Home movie initially because we were actually gonna learn a lot more about the character, but Sony forced them to, do, to make more multi universal aspect because they wanted to make it connect with the Sony universe. Again, I don't think connections with the Sony universe are a bad idea, but I definitely feel like if they make it force, it's not going to be as fun or it's not going to be as cool to see them cross over. We already know about the Craven the Hunter movie with Aaron Taylor Johnson in it as Craven the Hunter. We're probably going to see Spider-Man in that movie. And I like that idea of seeing Spider-Man, him a villain fighting Spider-Man from the villain's perspective. That's a great idea. But when you mess up Spider-Man's movie or a great idea for a Spider-Man movie after he just got his entire identity revealed to the public with just throwing in multiverse stuff is definitely a cash grab in my opinion and i talked about that in my previous spider-man video with brantley um yeah i think sony again i think this greed maybe just got to him or maybe they just want you know to get in on it because now with the multiverse being a thing now they're like oh we can bring spider-man into our movies venom 2 craven hunter we can use we can use to now so now we can even capitalize more off of the off of the character so if i guess from a, a business standpoint this makes sense but from like a narrative perspective and like a fan perspective i'm not really a fan of it i definitely feel like sony has a lot of explaining to do if this movie isn't that good because there's a lot of places where they could have made the movie a lot better and again that would revolve around removing a lot of multiversal things because it wasn't originally meant to be in this movie like i said before marvel was planning on having loki being more multiverse centered and it's being reported that there were a bunch of rumors in the past when they first announced WandaVision and Loki tying into Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness that Loki and Wanda were going to be in Multiverse of Madness and it was going to be that trio going through the multiverse but after the Sony and Disney deal Sony wanted Disney to implement the multiverse into Spider-Man No Way Home. All right so now I want to talk about the rumored plot for Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm going to go through the entirety of the plot and then give you guys my thoughts on every single one of the details that I go over. So the rumored plot is that all the villains die in their own universes and 
when they die, they get sucked into the MCU universe. Doctor Strange finds them all and locks them up in a prison in the MCU universe. But Tom Holland's Spider-Man will go to Strange to fix his identity issue via a spell or something along those lines. And then the villains will manipulate Tom Holland's Spider-Man into letting them free because they were all killed and murdered by their Spider-Man in their respective universes. This will all end up being Tom Holland's Spider-Man's fault that the villains are free. And then Holland and Strange will have to team up to round them up. So those are all the plot details that we know so far. That's definitely a lot of stuff to go over. There's been no official word on if the Spider-Men from different universes will be in this movie, but I definitely feel like if they're implementing their villains, they have to. Plus all of the VFX artists are coming back. Everything just lines up. I definitely think the spider people are coming back, but again, there is no official word on that. So my thoughts on all these plot details, I'm really not sure if I like it. Same thing goes with that Sinister Six thing that I talked about earlier. It's once again, Tom Holland's fault for creating all of these villains or guilting into getting guilted into helping all of these villains is just like far from home. The reason I'm not the biggest fan of this is because all of this stuff that's going on when it comes to multiverse of villains and just Tom Holland's Spider-Man in general, it doesn't lead to Tom Holland becoming a better person or his Spider-Man becoming a better person. Spider-Man is supposed to save anyone in distress, not just fix the problems that he himself created. And so this movie and Far From Home, in my opinion, both just revolved around fixing problems that he created himself. Whereas in Homecoming, he was actually a friendly neighbor in Spider-Man. He was helping with crimes around the city as well as taking down Vulture. Far From Home and Spider-Man No Way Home just seem like they're not going in the right direction, especially in the terms of what Spider-Man is supposed to be for the city of New York and just for people in general and the symbol that he's supposed to be. Personally, the only thing I can say about these plot details is that I genuinely hope the manipulation is well earned because if they just do it basic like they did in Far From Home again, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed. And yeah, guys, that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on so you don't miss any time I upload a video or I go live. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.